Hi students, good day to you. Hope you are doing well wherever you are. This is your champion, Madam Akusia Inyeji. I'm here today to take you through our course titled The Social Environment. And the course code is EBS204. It is an elective course for those who are offering social studies as their major. And today we want to look at Unit 1. But before then, the major aim of this course is to equip the student teacher to be able to go out and teach students who will be able, who will be critical, and will be able to identify problems that affect the environment and will be willing and capable to help solve these problems. And so at the end of the course, we are expecting the student teacher to be equipped with the prerequisite knowledge and skills and the ability to help impart knowledge into our younger ones who would help to keep the environment. Like I've told you earlier, the course title is The Social Environment and the course code is EBS204. For the Unit 1, we are looking at the various theories that underpin human behavior in our social environment. And to take you through quickly, the various topics that we'll be looking at will be the theory construction, We'll be looking at the critical thinking at the micro level, the meso level, and then the macro level. And then we'll also look at the ecosystem theory. We'll look at the structural functionalism. We'll look at feminism, empowerment, and anti-oppressive perspective. This is what we'll be um, looking at so far as our unit one is concerned. So to begin, we want to look at the theory construction. When we talk about the theory construction, what comes into mind? It's simply a set of explicit, general, logically related statements designed to explain observed phenomena in the natural world. Something that has been looked into, a statement that has been made, that has been expansiated, that has been established, that we can use to explain things that happen around us so far as our social and our natural environments are concerned. That is what we mean by the theory construction. Again, it is a process. And when we talk about process, it is something that is ongoing. It has not ended yet. It is still in progress. Like somebody said, I am a work in progress. And it's a, set, it's, it's a set of state change by an autonomous agent. A change by an autonomous agent or by an organism composed of several autonomous agents. And when we say something is autonomous, you say autonomous. Autonomous means autonomous. So that agent that brings about that change, so far as the process is concerned, autonomous. And it is made up or it is made up of other agents that are also equally independent and they stand on their own. And in all, there are three logical prepositions in theory construction. And we want to quickly look at that one too. The first one that we want to look is abduction. That is the firstness. It plays the role of generating new ideas and hypotheses. So one of the things that, or one of the propositions that underline the theory construction is abduction. The adaption simply means the first thing that happens. And the first thing is the ability to generate new ideas or to create an hypothesis. And when you create an hypothesis, it might be an assumption which you want to test and see if indeed it is true or not. Then the second thing has to do with deduction. And it functions as evaluating the hypothesis. So for example, you've thought that Enkwala is that true? That is abduction. Then the deduction comes in when you try to use all the scientific methods to prove that indeed, that is where you deduce something after the data that you may collect to really establish the point. And then the last thing has to do with the induction. It's justifying of the hypothesis with empirical evidence. And when we talk about empirical evidence, we are talking about where you have collected your data, you've analyzed the data, you've compared it with the literature, and you now can establish and make a firm conclusion that indeed it is true that 
omo omo ye hia fo nyina omo ma me ye hia fo nyina nyini e be ye hia fo so these are the three major propositions abduction you are trying to establish a, 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 a point or you are trying to bring out an idea which might be true or it might not be true the deduction has to do with finding out evaluating whatever you have thought of and then the induction is when you have done all gone through all the processes the scientific processes you can really make a point that indeed what you are thinking or what you pre presume is correct or wrong that is that so now let's look at the deductive reason what goes into it it works from the more general to the more specific mm, it's interesting right Sometimes this is formally called the top-down approach. I said it is called what? The top-down approach. So you work from a more general and then you land at a specific point. So for example, all Monaco students are bad ladies. It is a general thing. Then you now work into it and then you come to the micro level, the smallest level to find out whether indeed that is true. And we might begin with thinking up a theory about our topic of interest. We then narrow that down into a more specific hypothesis we can test. So you make the general thing and then you narrow it down. Two, we narrow down even further when we collect observation to address the hypothesis. This ultimately leads us to be able to test the hypothesis with specific data and then we make a confirmation as to the original theories as we might have seen. And so you make a general statement, it's too broad, you now narrow it down to a specific one, and then you start to collect data to find out and to make a confirmation to whatever statement you have made to prove it wrong or right. Then when you come to the inductive, it works in other ways. You can move from specific observation to broader generalization and theories. And then we sometimes call it the bottom-up approach. I said it is called what? The bottom-up approach and not bottoms-up, which is the kind of thing that pretends to say that consumers, when they are trying to close for the, you know, the English way. So it's a bottom-up approach. And that approach also starts from down up and not from up to down. And then the inductive reason, inductive reason we begin with specific observations and measures, begin to detect patterns and regularities, formulate some intensive hypothesis that we can explore and finally end up developing some general conclusions or theories. My student, can you bring out definitions between the inductive, deductive, and then the um, abductive? That would be your assignment to be able to bring. Just give me one line difference between the three main reasonings, the inductive, the adaptive, and then the deductive. Just one line sentence, and you post it at my Google class for me, for me to see what you were able to come out from that one. So those of us who might not be my students can also post their understanding or their differences at the comments level, and I can also read it and then give you my feedback where necessary. So in conclusion, we have realized that the theory construction is general, and it describes a circle of theory construction within a single instance. So to describe the life cycle of theory construction within a single agent is to say that the real world asks the agent for a concrete solution in a single instant case. Then the solution is abstracted in order to identify laws that are more general. In other words, it means that you need to create a hypothesis you need now to, it can be broader, it can be narrower. You can start from the general, narrow it to specific, or you can start from the specific and generalize it. Then you now look for information to either diffuse or prove whatever hypothesis you have generated. And then you need to draw a conclusion based on the data collected. Finally, the abstracted solution is applied to other classes of instances of the abstract problem that is generalized, the interplay of those operations in one single autonomous 
agent is widely molded into the work on machine learning. So that is that for every construction. Now we move on to look at critical thinking. When we talk about critical thinking, what comes into mind? To think critically. Uh-huh. Can I have one or two students explaining it at the comments point or at any point telling me what critical thinking is? When we talk about critical thinking, for me, it is your ability to make an informed decision after you have done all the necessary checks. So, for example, this man is bad. You don't just conclude that, oh, I'm bad or you're bad. But then you might wait and look at what constitutes somebody who is bad. At what point in time do we say that this person is bad? What evidence do you have to prove that indeed he has that character? Then when you have done all those things, then you can conclude that, in fact, the person is bad. So anybody who thinks critically always makes an informed decision. Let's look at what we have. When we talk about critical thinking, is the ability to conceptualize. Take note of the key words there. The ability to conceptualize, apply, analyze, synthesize, and or evaluate information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and actions. So you receive the message, you computerize it into your mind, you now look at it critically, examine it, you evaluate and you authenticate it, and then you can say that indeed it is right or it is wrong. And you do, you get the information by through observation, through personal experiences, through reflection, and then through reasoning, out of what reasoning, the mind will be at work. Not look at things in a biased way, but in a well objective way. And then you are able to draw a conclusion about an issue. And this definition is given to us by the National Council for Excellence. That is the meaning of critical thinking. We have three major levels of critical thinking. But before we go there, let's look at this viewpoint. To look at a person or a situation from objective and neutral standpoint without jumping into a conclusion or making assumptions. That is another definition for critical thinking. You look at a situation or a person in a very neutral point, in a very objective way, before you conclude. And then critical thinking is also the ability to think clearly and rationally about what you do or what to believe. It includes the ability to engage in reflective and dependent thinking. Someone with critical skills is able to do the following. One, the, pe the person is able to understand the logical connection between ideas. In fact, when you write an essay, you read and realize that idea will in so. But somebody who is a very critical thinker is able to link one issue to another to be able to make an informed decision. Two, is able to identify, construct, and evaluate arguments. Three, he's able to detect inconsistencies and common mistakes in reasoning. Four, he's able to solve problems systematically. Five, he's able to identify the relevance and importance of ideas. Is also again able to reflect on the justification of one's own beliefs and values. So that is that for us. We've looked at what critical thinking is. We've looked at the ability of somebody who is a critical thinker and what is capable of doing. So if you are a critical thinker, you go through some various state stages. The first thing is that you need to look at the issue. When you hear the issue for the first time, you relax and then you take a deep breath. You assimilate whatever you've heard into your system. You now digest it. You now want to find out whether indeed what you have heard is true by collecting data. And when you are able to collect the data, you are able to draw a very decisive conclusion on the issue you have heard. And to let you know, there are three major levels in critical thinking. We have the micro level, we have the 
meso level and then we have the macro level the macro the micro is mi that is the basic level the personal level of critical thinking at that level it has to do with you alone thinking about issues to be able to draw a conclusion or between you and one person not many people so when we talk about the micro the micro it is the fundamental level the meso level is in between the macro and then the micro that is the bigger umbrella and that one has to do with looking at issues within the intermediate so for example if i am looking at it from the social level you and your family you and your school you and your church that is the um, meso level and then the macro level has to do with let's say national issue bigger issue so for example COVID 19 should there be a total lockdown or there shouldn't be a total lockdown before you be able to draw a conclusion you think critically and when you are taking the decision on COVID-19, then basically you are thinking at the micro level, that is the bigger umbrella or the highest level. And then the macro is at the smallest level. Should I leave my boyfriend or I should stick by him? You are taking decision at the macro level. And then the missile has to do with you and your friends. Now let's look at the importance of critical thinking. We know that somebody who is a critical thinker makes an informed decision. I know that is your slogan. ASU or SASU, Social Studies um, Student Association. They say that you are critical thinkers. What makes you a critical thinker? I've discussed that. But if you are a critical thinker, what would be some of the importance? One, critical thinking is not a matter of accumulating information, my dear ladies. Not that I know. You know when you go to this, you see that and so what? But the person is able to discern, to be able to deduce, will be able to analyze, will be able to draw a conclusion based on the data collected. So I said that a person with a good memory and who knows a lot of facts is not necessary a it's not necessarily good at critical thinking. Okay, the see okay in or facts and figures. No? That doesn't make you a critical thinker. But a critical thinker is able to deduce consequences from what he knows. And he knows how to make use of information to solve a problem and to seek relevant sources of information to inform himself. And to their college, you say, you know, when a woman, it is true, but that is not it. But your ability to make good use of that information by um, uh, getting out the relevant ones and helping to solve a problem is one of the importance of critical thinking. Again, as critical thinking should not be confused with being argumentative or good critical of other or being critical sorry of other people obiadi obeye bia ni obiadi obeye bia wo asemo ho ye pegi asemo o twene time that doesn't mean that you are a critical thinker but a, a, a critical thinker can be used in exposing fallacies and bad reasoning and so critical thinking can also play an important role in cooperative reasoning and constructive tax. So when you are giving a group work, when you are asked to do something, a very critical thinker, or if you are critical thinkers, you can go and look for information. You sit down and then you bring your ideas on board. It might mismatch, but you may be able to apply it in such a way that you will see that there is coherency and you get the results that you are looking for. So critical thinking can help us acquire knowledge, improve our theories, and strengthen arguments. We can also use critical thinking to enhance our processes and improve social institutions. Give me two activities under that. Just give me two activities or two areas that critical thinking can be used to enhance work processes and then also to improve social institutions. I'll be expecting your comments and your answers. Again, some people believe that critical thinking hinders creativity creativity sorry because it requires following the rules of logical and rationality but creativity might require breaking rules 
if you really want to be creative, my dear, sometimes you need to break the odds. You need to break the rules to be able to put there. And thus, I want to say it is wrong. It is untrue. You can still work within the tight system and be a critical thinker. Critical thinking is quite compatible with thinking out of the box. Can I give an example? An example is when you are giving a course outline or a handbook and the students know nothing apart from what is in the handbook. You are not a critical thinker. Are we together? Yes. But somebody may decide to read the handout, go out and look for extra information, compare it with what she has in the handout, and you realize that when she is writing, she writes more than what is in the book. And that makes a person a critical thinker. Again, challenging consensus and pursuing less popular approaches. If anything, critical thinking is an essential part of creativity because we need critical thinking to evaluate and improve our creative ideas. So think outside the box. And some also have the view that critical thinking is a domain generally thinking skills. Domain general thinking skills. That is the ability to think clearly and rationally is important. Whatever we choose to do, we need to think clearly and we need to think rationally as a human being. If you work in education, research, finance, management, as a student, then critical thinking is obviously important. You may get a question in an examination which is an applied question. It might not be a direct answer, but your ability to think outside the box will help you to be able to pass the exams and pass very well. So we are made to believe that critical thinking skills are not restricted to a particular subject area. Being able to think well and solve problems systematically is an asset in any career. So if you really want to excel as a student, think outside the box. Again, it is important in the new knowledge economy. The global knowledge of our economy is driven by information and technology. Like we are doing now, nobody knew that there would be COVID-19. And so we are all waiting for our handouts and whatever. Here we are. We are faced with the situation. Would I sit down in my room and say that until students resume, I will not teach? Here is Madame Akosia now behind the camera trying to give out information to the students. Now, students, whether you like it or not, need to learn how to use the Zoom. You need to learn how to use the Edmundo. You need to learn how to use the Google Class and all other avenues that will help in virtual learning. And that is what we mean by critical thinking. So critical thinking promotes self-thinking that we get knowledge in solving problems. And it is very, very important in our fast-changing workplace. Now, every teacher, whether ICT, madam, or ICT, or whatever, whether my student is an ICT student or not, will now have to be familiar with everything so far as the phone is concerned or the laptop is concerned to be able to catch up with whatever is happening within the COVID-19 season. It enhances language and presentation skills. Critical thinking enhances language. It improves of your communication skills and your ability to present skills or present issues. And then clearly, critical thinking is also can help improve the way we express our ideas. It helps us to be able to express our ideas because we will analyze the issues and draw a logical conclusion from whatever we have learned. Again, critical thinking also improves comprehension ability, your ability to disseminate whatever you have learned. It also promotes creativity to come up with something new so far as an issue is concerned. So it creates or it um, plays a very crucial role in evaluating new ideas, selecting the best ones and modifying them if possible. I've said so much about the um, importance of critical thinking. I want you to also give me, I'm giving you the last one, I want you to add more to whatever I have given you. Again, critical thinking is crucial for self-reflection and critical thinking is the foundation for science, 
and democracy. So if you want to have a good presentation skills, be a critical thinker. If you want to have a reflection, have be a good critical thinker. If you want to be a good scientist and a democratic person, you need to be a critical thinker. If you want to bring innovation into your environment, you need to be a critical thinker. These are some of the importance. I can go on and on and on, but I want to end it here and then expect you to also add more and bring your comments and your questions as you listen and read along with your handouts. I wish that as you are listening to these things, you have your materials, your handbooks, your pencils, your jotters, so that things that you don't understand, you can write it and bring it up for further discussions as you go to our Google Classroom. Thank you. I would want you to subscribe as I put the link on your WhatsApp page. You subscribe, you link, and then you share with other people as well. So I will put the link on our platform for everybody to subscribe. It. Please do well to subscribe. Please do well to share. Please do well to link it as well for us to have a fruitful lesson. Thank you.